So I have amassed quite a large video game collection in my several years of video game collecting. And while I've sort of slowed down my collecting habits, maybe thinking about getting rid of some of the filler in my collection, like do I really need a copy of Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2003 on the PS2? Maybe if there was a mode to like go on a bender, wreck your car, and sleep with an adult film star, I would be more interested in playing it. But while my collecting habits have definitely slowed down, over the years I've also purchased a lot of video game consoles and handhelds. So in today's video, I wanna show you guys the six rarest consoles and handhelds that I have in my collection. Basically tell you guys the story about how I got them and why I think they're so cool. Now this isn't a flex video or anything. If you know anything about me, you would know that I'm a very cheap individual, so I did not pay any sort of market prices on any of these systems, but I just thought it would be a fun way to take a look at some of the more rare items in my collection. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about the six rarest consoles and handhelds in my gaming collection. So we are going to kick things off with one of my favorite consoles in my collection and one that I actually play quite a bit and that is the Sega CDX. Now the Sega CDX was a very unique console because it combined the three consoles that Sega had out on the marketplace at that time. You could play your Sega Genesis games via the cartridge slot. You could play your Sega CD games via the CD slot on this system and you can actually sort of jimmy rig a 32X in order to work on this as well. You would have to put like a little piece of cartridge board in the cartridge slot to sort of stabilize the 32X and make it read the games because the 32X was a very top heavy system. Now Sega actually was going to release an attachment for this that would make it a bit easier to keep the 32X stabilized but that never came to be. Hey RGT where'd you learn about that Sega 32X attachment for the Sega CDX? Well I actually learned about it in the complete Sega 32X guide available on Amazon now. But this has become a very desirable system over the year. I was actually shocked to see how much it's selling for nowadays. It looks like just the system alone is selling for $300 and upwards nowadays, which is absolutely fascinating to me. Now it is a very versatile system, so I do sort of understand it. I actually picked this up from a buddy of mine named Xander, who runs a YouTube channel that does retro and modern gaming content. I'll have a link to him in the description box down below. But he was basically downsizing his collection. He actually had some 32X carts that I needed as well at the time to complete my Sega 32X collection so I picked this up along with a couple 32x games for a very reasonable price we were both happy with the price point of this and I just absolutely love this system you can hook up some HD retrovision cables to it and make it look great on your CRT TV shout out to Nick and Steve my check better be in the mail for that plug or you can use something like a retro tank on it as well I just absolutely love this system I think it's so great it's so fascinating and it's just crazy to see it rising in price over the years also you can play CDs on this music CDs and they actually sort of marketed it as a portable CD player because I mean that was just the 90s man. Next up let's take a look at a handheld that never released in North America but I think is absolutely fascinating and that is the Game Boy Light. Now the Game Boy Light released in Japan only in early 1998. At the end of 1998 of course the Game Boy Color came out. So the Game Boy Light never really had a chance to do anything but what made the Game Boy Light so unique was the fact that it was the first Nintendo handheld that would actually light up. It had an indiglo color light to it so that you could actually play this system in the dark and I don't know why Nintendo never really sort of went forward with this sort of technology. Of course the next time we saw a light up Game Boy system was with the Game Boy Advance SP. So quite a bit of time went in between these systems. I think the Game Boy Light is a really unique system though. It plays all of your Game Boy games region free and it's just a really unique piece of gaming history. I picked up this Game Boy Light at Too Many Games 2018 and I paid about market price for it. I want to say I paid about $100 for it. It's not in the greatest condition ever but I just love this system. I think it's so cool and so unique that Nintendo was trying to do things with light up technology and then they just sort of abandoned it and went back on it. The Game Boy Light, like I said, never released outside of Japan. It had a very short lifespan as well, but it's definitely a very cool system. If you love Game Boy systems, this should be a no brainer for you to pick up. So check out importing one because I think they're just a really cool little system. Next up, a lot of people like to act like distinguished individuals by utilizing their GameCube and the handle on the GameCube system. But there was actually a system that released before the GameCube that offered a handle and that is the PC Engine briefcase system and yes it has a handle so you can walk around and act like you're a businessman but I absolutely love this system. Once you take the cover off of it, you can see what this system clearly is. It is a PC Engine standard system and a PC Engine CD-ROM 2. And it has this interface unit here that you plug in both of the systems into and they work together in conjunction. Now the PC Engine, of course, was known as the TurboGrafx-16 in North America, but the TurboGrafx-16 never really caught on in North America and the library of games was pretty small. They also released the TurboGrafx-CD system as well, but nobody ended up buying that. 
But the PC Engine was actually pretty popular in Japan and had a great library of games for it. Now, of course, this does play your standard PC Engine Hue card games, but it also plays PC Engine CD games as well. Now, of course, there is no region protection on this, so if you just want to burn a disc, much like a Sega CD game, you could simply do that. But one thing I always found fascinating was the Hue card technology on this, because there were actually different Hue cards that would allow you to play different PC Engine CD games, and you had to have these Hue cards in order to play those games in order for your system to have additional RAM to run these games. Now, I don't have the third card in this series. The third card is actually very expensive and plays some more advanced fighting games, but I do have the second one, which is pretty much the standard one to play most PC Engine CD games. I actually picked this up from my YouTube friend, Kid Shoryuken, who is a gaijin living in Japan, and these are actually very, very common in Japan. He just walked into a video game store and was like, hey, I found one for you. Do you want it? And he showed me like a bunch of pictures of all these different PC engines to choose from, and I ended up picking up this one from him for a very reasonable price. But I absolutely love this system. I think it is such a cool and unique system. I mean, it has a handle. Like, what more do you want from a video game system? But definitely something very cool. I'll have a link to Kid Shoryuken's channel in the description box down below. Now, out of all the systems that I'm showing you guys in this video, this system was actually the most recent purchase for my collection. I bought this back in 2019, and that is the Wonderswan Color. Now, the Wonderswan was, of course, the brainchild of the original designer of the Game Boy, Gunpoi Yokoi. So a lot of people had very high expectations for this system. Now, while it didn't make a huge dent in Nintendo's handheld market, it did sell decently enough. And of course, there was the Wonderswan and the Wonderswan Color system. I have a Wonderswan Color here that is the Final Fantasy collection. They actually remade a lot of the original Final Fantasy games specifically for the Wonder Swan and the Wonder Swan Color. So this was a very big deal at the time. Now unfortunately most of the games on this system are in Japanese so I can't really play most of them. There are some import friendly ones but really most of the library of games is inaccessible. But I just thought this was such a cool and unique system and I love the Final Fantasy branding all over it as well. I actually picked this up off of a Facebook group that I'm a member of. Basically this guy who lives in Japan comes across different things and sells them for pretty cheap. I want to say I paid about $70, $80 for this to be shipped to me, which is a very reasonable price. Unfortunately, it's a system I'm not going to play a whole hell of a lot, but it's definitely something very unique and something that I definitely wanted to add to my collection. The next system is actually the oldest system out of all these in this collection video. I purchased this back in like 2004 off of eBay for about 60 or so dollars, and that is the Game Boy Advance SP NES Edition, and I absolutely love this system. I think this system sort of helped kickstart the retro revolution because this is around the time when retro games started to get really popular. Now, Nintendo coincided the system release, of course, with a variety of NES games that were ported onto Game Boy Advance cartridges. I actually have a full collection of all those cartridges. I may or may not have made a video on that. I'm pretty sure I did. But yeah, you can play your NES games on the Game Boy Advance SP. Now, of course, this system just looks so cool because of the aesthetic of the system. It looks like the NES, and I just absolutely loved this at the time, and it was a must-own for me. Now, it is worth noting that this has the original Game Boy Advance SP screen. It does not have the improved one that was seen in later years of the system's life cycle. I thought about upgrading the screen for this, but I kind of just want to keep it stock. And I really like that I have the box for this. You can get these for about $70 to $80 off of eBay nowadays, but to find a box in pretty good condition is a bit tougher to come across. Now, I don't have all the manuals for it or anything, but it's complete enough for me, and it's just such a fascinating and cool looking system that I absolutely love it. And the final system I want to show you guys should come as really no surprise to you if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, and that is my Panasonic Q. I absolutely love my Panasonic Q. Now, the Panasonic Q was, of course, released only in Japan, but what makes this GameCube really stand out is the fact that it'll play your Game Boy games, but it will also play DVDs as well. Because one thing I always look for in a system is, will this system play my Back to the Future 1 through 3 DVD collection? If it doesn't, I'm probably not going to buy it. So I definitely had to put my hands on this. I just absolutely love this system though. I think it just looks so unique. I love the little screen on it that talks to you, and all the things that light up on it. It's just such a fascinating looking system, and really, I think it just looks so beautiful. Yeah, it kind of looks like a toaster oven, but whatever. Like, it's a sexy toaster oven. Now, I actually picked this up at Long Island Retro Gaming Expo 2018, and I was kind of worried about it, because when I bought this, it didn't come with the standard uh, controller for the Panasonic Q, which isn't a huge deal. It's just a black controller, and I think the platinum controller actually looks better since it matches 
matches the system better, but it didn't have a power cable. Now the seller assured me that it worked, but I was kind of like, oh, shit, man, I hope it does work. So I ended up paying about $250 for this system, but thankfully it did work and it works absolutely brilliantly. And that was a very, very cheap price because if you look on eBay for these nowadays, they're going for very, very expensive. I think this is just the coolest GameCube system to ever come out. This is a system that will never leave my collection and I absolutely love it. All right, so those are the six rarest consoles and handhelds that I have in my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the little stories behind these systems as well. Let me know in the comments section down below if you guys own any of these or if you want to get any of these or what the rarest systems you have in your collection are. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on this channel. If this video does well, I will do more retro stuff. It's sort of a supply and demand issue, but I do love talking about retro stuff from time to time. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.